This meeting is being recorded. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this um, unofficial SBA forum. You're going to be able to hear from candidates, um, their plans, their agendas and everything. So the way this is going to work is I've posted the updated candidate speaking order in the chat function. So if you're not sure what um, position you're in, you can go ahead and check there. We're starting with SBA exec, going through liaison positions, and then going through the classes, starting with 3D, then 2E, then 2D. Um, there are a couple questions that we received from students that uh, they wanted answered. So some of them are for SBA president, some of them are for just the day candidates. So I'll ask those in chunks after each um, candidate selection goes through. So that being said, why don't we go ahead? Do I mind posting in the chat again? Yes, I can post it in the chat again. Let me do that. Um, Candidate list is in the chat again. It's functionally the same as the one that I sent around last night. Um, one addition and one subtraction. So, if everyone is ready, if we can go ahead and get Maya Foster on to start us out with SBA Exec Board. Can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? Okay. Well, hello everyone. Maya Foster, and I'm running to be your next student president. I'm currently one of three class representatives for the 1D class um, and it has been an honor and privilege to serve my class in this way and I hope to be able to take my service to the next level. Um, in the uh, time that I have for my introduction, I just want to briefly go over my four points for my platform um, and then hopefully can be able to expand more in the Q&A. And so my platform is centered on four things, academic success, community service, diversity and inclusion, and mental health awareness, education, and support. And so with academic success, I think for me, the, what's most important is to monitor how the updated pass-fail system will continue to affect us students. I know currently that decision was made with the hard work of the current executive board and, and going to those faculty meetings, and that was the best decision that was made for us at the current time. And so I wanna continue to see how that affects us in the upcoming months. Um, and how that affects us in the job market and, and employment and to make sure that the faculty and everyone is aware of how this ever-changing situation continues to affect us. Then with community service, I want to bring back the community service committee and continue to plan and implement outreach programs for the student body to participate in. I think it would be a great opportunity for um, class and different divisions to be able to collaborate and work with each other and socialize in a way that allows us to give back to the community. Um, I think that it will be additional um, opportunities that have been brought up to me about the Baltimore City Public Schools and the Homeless Period Project. I think that those will be great opportunities for students to be able to engage and whether it be physically or um, with monetary donations. Um, next is diversity and inclusion. I think I've been passionate about diversity and inclusion my entire academic um, career. And I'm passionate about expanding our idea of diversity and not making it just the visible identifiers, but diving deeper and making sure that our leadership is representative of the student body and that we are really um, adequately representing um, the needs of the students. And to do that, we need diverse representation to bring different perspectives and experiences. And last, but certainly not least, is mental health awareness. I think this current um, pandemic has really brought to light um, the needs of mental health awareness and education and support. And I do understand that um, isolation being in different environments will definitely have an impact on student health. And so while mental health is important completely and always outside of just this current time, I think that there will be additional attention that needs to be placed there. And I would work with the SBA to, and student affairs to provide resources and support for student need when we return in the fall. Thank you. That's all I have for now. Thank you. Maya, and thank you, Maya, for the reminder. Um, I'm asked that the contested candidates uh, spend about four minutes uh, speaking and uncontested candidates spend about two. Additionally, if you are not speaking, if you could mute your mic, please, that would be wonderful. Um, and then if you have uh, questions for specific candidates, you could hold those until the end or put them in the chat function um, if you have to leave so the candidate can answer them at the end during questions. Um, with all of that being said, um, thank you, Maya, again, and I'd like to ask uh, Jenny Peabody Harrington if you would like to go ahead and start. Thanks, Rachel. Can everyone hear me okay? Great. 
So my name's uh, Jimmy Peabody Harrington. I'm currently a 2L and uh, been a member of the SBA for the past two years. I'm running to be your Student Bar Association Executive President. Uh, there are three reasons why I would love to earn your vote and why I think my candidacy, uh, candidacy is the best uh, best uh, in place to move us forward as a student body and as a student community. Those three pillars are experience, advocacy, and engagement. Um, sorry, I had something drove by outside. Uh, so yes, the three pillars. Um, as uh, having served in the SBA for the past two years, I was the class president in my 1L year and have served as the vice president of the entire SBA in my 2L year. During my first year, we were able to do a lot of awesome events to promote not only philanthropy, but engagement with the, with the class and the rest of the student body. We had a great uh, network in conjunction with uh, Ronald McDonald House, which used to actually just be up the street from the law school and has now moved over to a new location, a really beautiful new location in East Baltimore. And we also did a big uh, uh, event where we collected a bunch of cans of food for the Maryland Food Bank and were able to share that with them around Christmas time. In addition to this, we also had some awesome happy hour events where we were able to get the students together and really get to know each other as uh, a 1L class. During my time as uh, the vice president, I helped make uh, student selections for uh, faculty committees, which do an unbelievably great job of advocating for students on campus in their specific groups. I also uh, assisted with the current SBA president to plan the talent show, which is in memory of one of their late classmates and sat in on the faculty and alumni committee meetings. So that's just why I think as far as the transition from this the past two years to this new presidency, I think I have the experience necessary to really help advocate for our class because I our not only my class, but all the classes, which is what I've done as vice president. Uh, that advocacy will continue to include and build upon the team that we have here at the law school while also bringing in the new 1L class next year. Some really cool events I think we can continue to put on and help shape uh, our vibrant student community are to continue to try to plug happy hours and events and uh, also having a lunch and lecture series with faculty members so that we can bring in you know, out, uh, lectures outside of just the traditional class sense. Um, and finally, I would think it's really important that we have an SBA social media person uh, to bring together all the student groups and broadcast that to the student body in a new way that's other than, you know, OEA of a traditional email setup. Since so many of us are on either Twitter and Instagram, I think that's a really important addition that we need to make uh, as a, you know, 21st century law school. Um, that's just a small fraction of my platform. If you'd like to see more information, I have a website set up. It's um, it's Jimmy for SBA president uh, dot Webley dot com. There's uh, I've included that link in uh, my email information as well. And tomorrow I'm going to be holding uh, an hour long office hours from 12 to one. I included information on how to get onto that WebEx there. I'd love to see you. Um, and I'd love to hear from you more ideas on what I can build onto my platform. And if you have any questions about the platform specifically, thank you everyone for uh, joining today. And uh, I hope you choose uh, to vote me as SBA class, uh, SBA executive president. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, okay, up next, we have uh, Frank Phillips. So go ahead, Frank, take it away. Can you hear me? All right. I just want to say hello to everybody. You all look wonderful and healthy and safe. Um, and I really want to thank Landon and James. And I think Nathan was helpful too in setting this up. Um, we should have had a candidate forum put on by the SBA, but maybe that's something we can figure out next time around. Um, yeah, it's, I'm, my name is Frank Phillips and I'm running for president. Um, and I think, uh, I really do appreciate all of you guys coming in and showing up because you are exactly what the school needs and the SBA, which is engagement. There is so much apathy with the student body and with the SBA after your first, you know, semester here, where it's just kind of like things are, you know, they they take a lull, which is fine. I mean, it's understandable. We're all busy, um, 
But in my opinion, the SBA is more than just uh, a big party planning committee. Um, and I think that that's kind of where it's gone uh, in the last couple of years. So I really want to get that back to functioning to a more of a student representative body. Um, and that starts with the SBA executive board. Don't get me wrong, I know we're all busy, but when we sign up to run for these positions, it means that we have to take them serious and do what we're supposed to do. Um, I think, I mean, I, I'm going to be a little direct, but I, I feel like the SBA hasn't been uh, uh, doing its job, especially during this crisis, um, because we were pretty much absent and didn't communicate with the student body at all. And I think that that's just a symptom of the, the problems with the SBA. So the very first thing that needs to happen, and this is for anybody who wins, you know, like this should be your focus. The SBA executive board needs to actually function how it's designed to function and do what it's supposed to do. We didn't have a single meeting throughout the entire semester for the executive board. I don't know why, but it didn't happen. So these are the things like this is where it all starts. This is where we start getting supervision of like our agenda, how we can plan things out, what we can do in the future. But that that doesn't happen. So when you don't have that starting point at the top, there's really no way, like there's no direction for the SBA. And it ends up things don't get done, things get missed, and you know, it's just it's a mess. So whoever the incoming president is has to take the initiative to get the SBA executive board and the SBA council involved and engaged in doing what they need to do. And that's, that's clearly the most important part. And I mean, that's, that's more than just the treasurer holding budget committee meetings. That's more than just the faculty committee meetings taking place. We're supposed to get reports. Um, well, the vice president is supposed to get monthly reports from the faculty committees. And there's a couple of them. There's you know, the administrative committee, uh, the, uh, I think there's eight faculty committees, correct? There's the, um, it's hard to, there's the administrative, the admissions, the appointments, the clerkship, the curriculum, the library technology committee, the professionalism and diversity committee and the mental health uh, question committee. This is where a majority of the actual work um, for representing students gets done. And the SBA as a whole never gets that information unless the executive board kind of pushes the committees to like do their jobs and to report to the SBA. So one of the things that I really want to do is have the SBA and these committees function more cooperatively because that's where the decisions are made. And this is where student in, you know, input is important. Um, you're going to have to stop me if I get close to four minutes. I'm not recording myself. I just have a lot that I want to get, you know. Um, but the, the committees are where everything happens. And the SBA needs that information from the committees in order to provide the feedback that they need um, to make these decisions. And there's so many important things that just get done without student input because the SBA doesn't function effectively. So that's that's my big plan. I don't want to go past my time, so I'll let it go. I hope you guys have questions for me. If you want to check out my website, franktphillips.com, there's a, I had some issues, some bugs in the website yesterday. They've all been fixed, um, but I have a really good plan for getting things done um, and for hopefully making the SBA what it should be. Um, and really just thank you guys for, for coming. I really appreciate all of your work. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate you being mindful of time. Very nice. Keeps things efficient. Um, so up next, uh, I'd like to ask Landon Taylor to go ahead and give a pitch. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Fantastic. So my name is Landon Taylor. I'm running for SBA Executive Board President. Um, and I'd like to tell you guys a story. So I am an evening student, and like most evening students who come to law school, I have a full-time day job. I have a full-time career, actually, that I've worked in for several years. And being a lawyer was what I always wanted to do, so I got the opportunity to come back to law school. And uh, that's where I am now. But when I first decided that I was going to 
come to law school, I was not planning to run for any office. I really wanted to kind of keep my head down and just focus on my classes. But right away, I noticed that there were a lot of issues um, with evening students that that I felt like really needed some guidance, some direction, and some some work. Um, in particular, you know, like right off the bat with orientation, um, evening students are not included, for instance, in like the welcome to the school that the day students pr participate in. Evening students don't participate in clinics. Um, and I was told kind of during orientation, that's because evening students don't want to participate in clinics. And then I was told by my class, we would love the opportunity um, to participate in clinics. So we're just not given that, that chance. Um, from big things to small things, evening students just kind of seem to be an afterthought. Uh, we didn't have access to like parking hours, Park it, like the parking office closed before evening students got on campus. So that was kind of like a big thing for most students who work in the evening or who come in the evening are commuters. So that was kind of a big thing to small things like the coffee shop closes before evening students get on campus. And if anyone needs coffee, it's the people who just worked an eight hour shift and are now coming to learn these difficult legal concepts, right? So I ran for um, president of my class kind of hoping to affect change in those ways. And what I kind of found was I was stopped from doing a lot of, I did get a lot of stuff accomplished. I'm proud of the things I accomplished. We have changed the way orientation works. We've given more opportunities to evening students. I've met a lot with the deans and the administration um, and they are all on board. What they're really waiting for is for the student government to step up and do more. And the student government has really been absent. Um, to Frank's point, there's a lot that needs to be done that just isn't getting accomplished the way it should. And there is a lot of apathy and it, it affects everything. So I, I noticed it first in the way that the evening students deal with things and have a lack of opportunity, but that lack of opportunity stretches throughout the entire school. It, it's draining our, our student organizations that aren't as engaged and as active as they should be. And I really feel like change has to come to the top from the top and there has to be a culture change. And that's why I'm running for executive board president. Um, I promised that I wouldn't be doing this if I wasn't committed. Again, I have a full-time day job and I'm going to school full-time. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't dedicated and committed to the idea of this culture change and making the school a better place for everybody. Um, a little bit about me and my background. I have worked in higher education for many years. That actually is my career. I started working in nonprofit, um, but uh, I'm originally from Alabama. I worked in nonprofit as soon as I graduated from college, helping uh, underprivileged students get access to resources and relationships that would help them get into higher education. I then moved uh, after working with administrations for many years into university administration myself. That's where I've worked for five years. I have a master's in higher education. So I have a lot of experience in building engagement and building programs for students. Um, and I really wanna do that here. The big project that I am kind of uh, proposing in this beginning is, an SBA legacy project. We have a problem with student opportunities, a problem with student engagement, and a problem with the way the SBA funding is allocated. I just don't think that it's allocated in a way that's really helping students. So I'm suggesting a project that would be proposed, uh, a yearly project. So every year we would take in student proposals and then the SBA would guide and fund um, creations of things like working vending machines or better student furniture or whatever they can imagine. Like that, that's why I really want to engage the student body. I'm over my time, but I appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak and I hope you guys will vote for me. Thank you. Thank you, Landon. Um, honestly, thank you guys for paying attention to the time thing. That's very important. Um, so I do have a couple questions that were submitted via email um, for the SBA exec president candidates specifically. I think the best way to do this is to allow each of you to answer. I'm going to limit you to a shorter answer, maybe like two minutes. If you would like to beef that up, you can send additional comments um, in an email. I will send all of the candidates the questions. So if you feel like you don't get a chance to answer them to the best of your ability, you can send a supplement. Um, so SBA exec candidates, these are the questions just for you. Um, the first one is, we have a lot of presidential candidates, some with strong SBA experience. Not all can be elected, and I fear losing their advocacy completely from SBA would be a net loss for us. How can we find roles for candidates that don't win the presidential election? Um, not to put anyone on the spot, but why don't we go in the order in which we spoke? Um, so Maya, if you have an answer for that, I can give you the floor now. That's honestly like a, an amazing question. I think 
Um, I don't have like a specific role in mind, but I know for me personally, um, regardless of whether or not I win, that my ideas and the, my platform that I've set forth are open to the president that does win and that I won't then shy away from participating in SBA in whatever way that I can. So um, there are plenty of ideas that I've heard from the other candidates that I completely support and believe in. And so I can say that while I don't necessarily have an established position, that I myself um, can assure and promise that um, I will help the, the next president in whatever way I can, even if it's just to seek advice or if there's something from my platform that they want to implement, they're free to use that. Um, I can, I would definitely enjoy and would and participate in that. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy. Thanks, Rachel. So this is a really important part of my campaign because I want to increase student involvement and engagement in not only SBA, but the school body. So there are two appointed commit uh, positions that the SBA president makes, the parliamentarian and the comptroller. Uh, for uh, an individual who is not elected and wants to still participate, I would love to include them on that team. And I think that that executive board team should even grow beyond this, just those two positions. As I said, I'm very interested in creating an SBA social media chair. And in addition to that, I think we could also have a barrister's chair and a uh, academic advocacy chair, someone who can be included in these meetings that I have with Dean Hayes and that I have with Stephen Boggs about increasing class selection and what have it may be. In addition to that, as I previously stated, one of the roles of the vice president and the executive board really as a whole is to make committee appointments. I'd love to have students who may not be elected to positions to apply for committee appointments and really have a very robust, engaged committee system where these individuals are able to include themselves in the work and be really involved in the SBA. And even just beyond that, I'd love to see more turnout at SBA meetings. And this is really what we want as a student body is just engaged, active uh, individuals who want to come together and make the school and the community a better place. And I think that those are all great ways that individuals who are not elected can continue to advocate and be a part of this great system. Thank you, Jimmy. Frank? Yeah, um, the committee appointments are a great way to get people involved. And I think that. Um, like we should have more students on these committees. I think that the selection process for that shouldn't just be um, one person, you know, maybe appointing their friends to these positions. Um, I think that we should really try and get the SBA involved and that had to do with uh, my advertising of the, the meetings. Like currently SBA meetings are not advertised even though they are open to the student body. Um, and I know at least for myself, uh, win or lose, I've already spoken with the incoming treasurer, um, Gabrielle, because the budget committee, um, like Landon was talking about, um, we, we really have been trying to change the budget process to make it more uh, efficient and open because it's currently uh, kind of a mess. And I think Landon will agree that anybody who wasn't on the budget committee last year probably is going to take a while to, uh, to understand what we were doing. Um, so, I, and, you know, and Rebecca can probably talk to that too. Um, but there, I think we, uh, I really do like love the one L's like you guys, I said this, before, you know, many times, like you guys are great. Like, look at, we didn't have, we didn't even have a candidate for him last year. Like you guys pushed this. It's great. Like we should be harnessing that. Um, so I think that the SBA can definitely come up with ways to get people more involved. But it starts with having that energy at the top, like having that, uh, you know, that president or that vice president and the executive board really wanting to do uh, the work. Um, and yeah, I mean, I really, I want to get everybody involved. That's my thing. Like, <laughs> and the student organizations too, like, if we can figure out a way to get the SBA, you know, active again, then these student organizations, like people can, there are certain student groups, and I mean, this semester kind of changed things, um, but the budget committee was really trying to push funding to the student organizations so that way they could be more active too. And all of this is just my way of saying that I really appreciate your question and we'll get people engaged. Thank you, Frank. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, this really is a fantastic question. And I mean, I, speaking for myself, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I'm here to advocate. I'm here to engage. And I want to be president. Um, I, I want that culture change. But if I'm, gosh, I don't want to go ahead and give a concession speech. But like, um, like, but if I'm not elected, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to continue to be a, a voice for the evening students. I'm going to continue to be a voice for the entire student body. Um, and I feel like the candidates that we have um, are here because they feel the same. And, and we do have those committee appointments. I would like to do more internal SBA committees in addition to the faculty ones. I, I, um, I think that there's a lot of things that, that the student body needs to have a bigger voice on. I think that we need to be more active in communicating and, and, and again, engagement and being active. And so I think that there are going to be lots of opportunities for students to become involved. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about what Frank said about student organizations, and I think that that's another important point. The SBA is not the only way to, to help the student body. Um, Frank is saying that there used to be SBA ad hoc committees in the past. Uh, that is exactly the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, I think student organizations need to be revitalized, and I think that that'll be a great way that everyone, not just the candidates for president or, or any other position, but everyone in the student body can become more active. Great, thank you, Landon. Um, okay, next pres or next question that is for um, SBA exec president candidates. Um, okay, issues I advocated for this year that we could not see through this year were one, an overhaul of the library exam bank and requiring teachers to have at least one final in it, and two, working with the library to expand the functionality of our video recording system so that more filtering and sorting can be done with class footage for review during the semester. How do you feel about either of these issues? A um, little open-ended. Um, so again, I'm gonna ask uh, two minutes and if Maya, you wouldn't mind starting us off again, that would be awesome. Thank you. Yes, may I have just like 30 seconds to think through something first? Is that okay? Yes, absolutely, sorry. Um, if anyone, not Maya, has an answer immediately. Okay. Someone else can go first. Yeah, if we want to change up the order to give, oh, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, if, if we want to give Maya breaks to not have to answer every question first and <laughs> just the pump the order. Because <laughs> oh, yeah, no, you, guys, you guys would yeah. go after, and I was like, that's a green. I should have mentioned the committee. So <laughs> you, you guys go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Um, okay, if perfect fine. anyone has an idea um, about exam banks and library video <laughs> functionalities. Yeah. I can talk about that if you want. Um, I think we, we did talk about this in the last SBA meeting, at least uh, the video system, Eddie Healy um, was doing research in that, and shout out to Eddie. Um, but the, uh, this is another thing where the, the focus on this falls with the Library and Technology Committee. Um, like, they're the ones who are going to be actively working with the, the library staff and with the, the associate deans and everybody. To get that installed and also with Dean Hayes and but this is where like the committee should be reporting to the SBA so that way we can give them the direct uh, input from students for things like that. Um, so that that's my answer. Like obviously these things like I exam banks, like it's ridiculous that we don't have one set up already. And the video system, uh, the SBA has already started to work on that. So I think that's great. I can go next if that's all right. That's great, Landon. Thank you. Um, I kind of had the exact opposite problem of Maya last time where it was like I had a lot of good ideas and then all of them were said before it got to me. So that's kind of funny. Um, so uh, I think that this is ex a great example of kind of what I mentioned in my opening speech about like the administration is waiting for the student government to take a more active role. Um, I, I do, you know, like we're going to have to collaborate. It's going to have to be something. It's not going to be something the students do or the administration does. It's going to have to be work that we do together. But it absolutely is something where the SBA should be taking a more active role. It shouldn't be the kind of thing where, okay, well, now we've received this input that students want this. We're going to forward this and then we're going to forget about it because that's the end of our role in it. it. That's absolutely not the case. We have to be more active if these are the things that we want. Um, and it has to be more than just sending an email and then passing the buck. Uh, so my 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 answer to this is that those are 
both great ideas and they are things that need that deserve to be pursued and they have to be pursued by an active um, executive board. Thank you, Linda. My Maya, you want to go ahead or should I jump in? Either way is fine with me. If you're ready to go, I can go after you. Okay. I was just trying to some semblance of the, or, the original order. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I, I guess my comments would just be, I, I, I think this probably is a question from Eddie maybe because I know that uh, we did discuss already trying to improve the recording system in classrooms and finding a way, you know, where you can search for text inside of a lecture or the PowerPoints can then be connected to the recording which would be very helpful, you know, not only as things were, but now that this virus is out and we don't know if people are going to be having to miss class or things are going to have to go virtual. And that is something that uh, I think the SBA can take a very active role in pursuing. And I know that steps have been made already uh, to begin that search uh, among the, uh, by the faculty, because that's something that I think they're interested in as well. As far as an exam bank goes, I think that's something that students would love, and I know I would definitely love, but um, there are some difficulties with this where uh, requiring faculty members to you know, add an exam or not, at the end of the day, sometimes does come up to faculty discretion, and a lot of them don't like to be told what to do and how to give their classes, but that is something that I think if we can show that there is um, you know, SBA and student body interest in having a more developed exam bank like we've done currently with the outline bank and trying to put that together for the student body. I think those are just great ways to try to show faculty and be active in, you know, this is what students would like and it'll help them learn better and do better on exams. I don't think the faculty would be opposed to measures like that. So I think those are two uh, very good points of ways that that uh, SBA should be advocating. And I have a little bit of information like that already on my website. So. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Maya? Yes. Um, so I agree that those, um, both of those ideas are great ideas and I support them both because they would help me um, as a law student. And I think that they would help our student body. Um, to, go, to go even further, something that we discussed on Wednesday in our SBA meeting, I think that this is also important for transitioning materials because ideas like the two that um, were included in the question um, and plenty of other ideas that I know that have been mentioned from class presidents, from class representatives, from different officers on our um, on the current SBA. I think that that's why it's important to have those transitioning materials, and I hope that that can continue even though we are remote, because we don't want to lose any ideas that have been brought up during our meetings, um, like these two, um, and to allow for the next the incoming board to be able to carry out the ideas and the the suggestions of the students that are currently. Um, on the board or that have been suggested to current members. So once again, I do agree that these would be excellent because right now I'm struggling right now with one class that I don't have an exam to reference from and I know I would benefit from that. Um, and I think that on top of that, um, the ideas and suggestions we've received should be written down somewhere that can be passed on to the next board so that we can continue the work that's been done this year efficiently. Awesome, um, thank you, Maya. So those were the only questions for um, specifically SBA exec um, president candidates. Um, again, participants, if you have questions, um, feel free to ask them. We'll have a Q&A at the end. Or if you have to leave before it's over, you can put them in the chat and I will ask candidates on your behalf. Um, and then you can check their responses in the recording. Candidates also, um, just a reminder, I will send you these questions if you want to type up um, or somehow deliver more detailed answers to those. Thank you, Maya, for being um, the first person to answer all the questions. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, so moving right along with SBA exec, we're gonna go to vice president. Um, first, we have Michelle Lee, if you'd like to get started. Hey, everyone, can you hear me? Perfect. All right, so I um, am running for executive vice president. I served as the 1L vice president this previous year. And I am running on a platform that I want to continue with what we were doing all this year in the 1L uh, class. I think Rachel actually has a ton of connections and um, we really did monopolize on those connections and community outreach. Um, I want to find a way to say yes to these outreach um, opportunities. Uh, I think that we have a tremendous, uh, we have a tremendous latitude when it comes to the SBA and what we can reach out into our community and do. And I would love to, to see that uh, monopolize 
Um, and I'm also running on a transparent and passionate advocacy. I think that I have a great um, understanding and relationship with being able to communicate to those in a higher authority or in a position of power um, ideas that have been relayed to me. Um, just a little bit about myself. I uh, currently, well, I was in the military, but I currently serve in the National Guard, which I have just been activated. So I will be serving and building um, testing facilities for the next month uh, all across Maryland starting tomorrow. And um, I think that if you let me be representative, I think I, I will definitely uh, just like, you know, I'm putting my money where my mouth is and helping the community now. And I think I'll put my money where my mouth is and advocate for you as well. Uh, outside of that, I don't really have anything. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, I will be more than willing to answer this for you. Thank you very much, Michelle. Appreciate it. Um, next uh, VP for SBA exec, I have Riley Shong. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Uh, so this will actually be a little different because I'm going to start off by saying when you go to vote, you will actually not see my name. Uh, as a policy matter, I decide to run when I feel like my services would be best served to the community. When I saw that Michelle was running after the uh, nominations came out, I withdrew my nomination. The reason why I wanted to come to speak was sort of because uh, several people actually asked me to. And I wanted to share some thoughts about the community going forward, especially in this crisis. I think that the reason a lot of people wanted me to run for some position was because of what I did when the school was considering whether to go to, whether to, go to pass fail. I started a petition. I didn't think it was going to go anywhere, but it got a lot of student involvement, right? And uh, it's amazing how much that was able to do. And I think that sort of resonates with what Frank was saying earlier that the SBA didn't feel like it was, or didn't feel like the SBA was really present at that time. Now, eventually they did get involved. And of course we had the resolution that we did. Uh, but I think that what this goes to show is that while it's important who we vote for here, it's equally as important to remember that as individual students, we are more than capable of getting involved in advocacy and getting involved in leadership in our school's community. To that extent, I'm still going to be helping out with Outlaw and I'm still going to be an active advocate in the community. I mean, when I before I came to law school, like this is the work that I did, right? Like I was an advocate in Memphis and I helped the people who are most disparaged in society uh, at sort of a grassroots level, right? And this is the work that I love doing. That doesn't require an elected position to do. Now, I have every confidence that Michelle will do a great job, but for her, all that, hooray for a unity platform. Uh, but just remember that there's also a lot that we can do as individual students. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Great. Um, thank you very much to Riley. Um, those were our SBA exec candidates for vice president, and now we're going to treasurer. So I can ask uh, Gabrielle Murphy if you'd like to come speak. Hi, thank you. Um, can you hear me? Um, so my name is Gabrielle Murphy. I'm currently a first year and I'm running to be the SBA treasurer. I wanted to, I am running uncontested, so I'll keep it short. But I know that the treasurer requires a skill set that is vital to the day to day operations of the SBA. So I wanted to just come on here and share a few experiences that I have that I think would make me a valuable candidate. Um, in 2015, I worked for a political campaign. I was the assistant finance director and budget director. I worked with a budget of about $1.1 million, um, allocating it to various components of the campaign to make sure we were running an efficient operation. I also have my master's in public policy, where my focus was in public budgeting. Um, I studied the way that local governments and uh, organizations uh, make these really important resource allocation decisions. And I was also in that program, the treasurer for um, our student run publication. In that position, I advocated for resources as well as kept the budgets running and made important um, in process refunds. Um, and so I just wanted to share those experiences and say that I have loved my time here at the University of Maryland. And part of that has been because I think we have some really great organizations. Um, and I just want to create an environment uh, to work with those organizations to keep them running as smoothly as possible. 
and I'm looking forward to working with everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I do have a, I have two questions that are directed to um, the SBA exec uh, kind of as a whole. So president, VP and treasurer. Um, from the perspective of being a student organization representative. Um, Shelby had a great idea for allocating questions. So uh, Maya started last time. So if we don't mind uh, starting with maybe Jimmy or Frank, or actually whoever has a good answer to the question, if you wanna just answer first, if you know off the bat, um, go right ahead. I don't know the best way to do this. Um, so all SBA exec candidates, um, what is your plan for the budget process next year? It abruptly changed this semester and that makes it hard to plan for future years. Do you want to go back to the way things were or move forward with the new framework, but more thoroughly work out the kinks? That's the first I, question. If I'm prepared to answer that. Great, go right ahead. Um, and I'm prepared to answer that because as a president of the 1E class this year, I was a member of the budget committee and this is something that I thought about a lot. Uh, another one of the reasons why I'm, I'm ru running is because there are so many policies and procedures that need to be evaluated and and then written down. I found so many times when I was having issues and trying to figure out a, a solution to a problem, I would go to the executive board and say, um, you know, how can we how can we deal with this? What can we do? And I was told, you know, and what is the policy? I was told, well, we don't have an official policy. We just kind of do things however we feel like, and that's just completely unacceptable. Um, when I mentioned in my intro, there's a lot of SBA funding that doesn't get spent. It doesn't get spent on the student body. It doesn't provide us with opportunities. It doesn't give us engagement. And that was sort of what the budget committee and the treasurer this year were trying to work to fix. Um, and I mean, we kind of ended up creating a bit more chaos um, than we did kind of fixing it. That said, I don't think I wanna go back to the, the way it was. It does have to be fixed. But what needs to happen is it can't be one person, um, whether that's the president or the treasurer, um, making that decision. That has to be the executive board working together with the budget committee to create a solution. And I, and I think for me personally, I also wanna get student uh, organization treasurers and presidents involved in that as well. How can we encourage student organizations to use funds appropriately? How can we get more engagement? How can we provide more opportunities for students? So I think that that's going to be an ongoing conversation, but yes, I think that the process has to be changed. Thank you. Um, and I'll just go ahead and jump in and say that uh, I have already been speaking with Frank a little bit about some of these um, I guess sort of problems in the procedures and I have already started going through some of the documents and some of what there is in place now because I do want to be able to hit the ground running um, and I just want to say I am also really looking forward to working with the executive board to make sure that we are addressing some of these problems um, and I do like the idea I do think that engagement with student groups and the student group treasures is also a great idea um, but yeah I am I'm working right now going through everything so that I can hit the ground running and work with everybody on this. All right, if nobody else wants to go, I, I may take more than two minutes to answer that if that's all right. Um, so we did start working the budget committee and I, and they're really, I feel like if, if we could have eight people just be the president of the SBA and it could just be the budget committee from last year, um, because we really, we, we did try to, to, to fix this, um, but like Landon was talking about, every, nothing is written down, things are confused. Um, towards the end there, the, the budget committee, in fact, kind of like started to do things on its own, um, like with the, uh, I don't know if you guys are aware that ESOL, the Entertainment and Sports Law Association, uh, they, um, they were gonna host a symposium. Um, so we, they put in an extra request for money and there was confusion over whether or not there was a maximum amount that the you know the group could receive, um, and I, I think that the uh, the budget committee just kind of told the group how much we're going to give them, um, and didn't inform the SBA executive board or kind of let her believe that the you know um, they just kind of ignored the president kind of at the end there because. The real problem is the budget committee, I mean, the budget process itself 
is way too complex and there's so much misinformation and so much misunderstanding and we really tried to make that simpler. So since you all will be um, involved in the budget process in the future in one way or another, I would like to just tell you real quick what we're, uh, what the, the plan for next year is because people assume that every group has these accounts, which isn't really the, it's not really real. Like the SBA is not a bank. We just kind of separate the money. So what we're, what our group is basically proposed to do in the future is um, every group will know from day one that they have up to $500 that they can just, like they don't have to fill out a, bu a budget proposal for, they just know they have $500 to spend, which is, that's fair, everybody gets it, because in the past, the it was really an unfair system, and the budget proposals that we received were just, nonsense and I think anyone on the budget committee can can attest to that. Um, so we really wanted to get a, a plan in place so that way the money was spent fairly um, and groups had access to it because in the past they weren't getting access to it. Um, so basically every group has, this is really the simplistic version of it and it just needs to get put on paper. Every group gets $500 that they can spend. They don't get $500, every group has the ability to get reimbursed up to $500. And then if they need more money than that, then they just make a request from the SBA. That's it. That's the simple, that's the simple version right there. And it's just about getting that into the constitution. And in order to get into the constitution, we need an SBA executive board that's willing to put in the work and to listen to people's opinions um, and not put things off or say, you know, that's a lot of work. We should take it slow. We have four SBA meetings a year. We didn't have an SBA executive board meeting. Uh, it's really just about getting, you know, everyone engaged and active. And I think the budget committee was extremely active and we, we really tried and are still trying. And hopefully when everybody takes their new positions, we'll continue to try um, to get that moving forward. And I will, regardless, I'll keep like every all, you know, it's, I'm here to help you, so, <laughs> um, yeah. I'll jump in. Who has and hasn't spoken? Oh, wonderful, thanks, Jimmy. Sure, so um, in talking with several student, uh, student group presidents, student group treasurers, being a member of the budget committee, my one L year, understanding how that process works, it's clear that the current system where you have to, you know, submit a GSG report, submit all these facts, submit a line item budget, it's too complicated and it needs to be changed. However, it needs to be changed collaboratively, not by just the budget committee or just the treasurer or just uh, one individual who might uh, think that there is a new system that needs to be placed. That caused a lot of confusion this past spring where student groups then had to come in and say, hey, there was a switch up in how much money we're supposed to receive. Now we're short on our budgets. And we, you know, so it, if something has to be done, it has to be done, I think, this spring after elections are done. I want to get together, meet with the new treasurer, meet with the class presidents in the budget committee, and meet also with Dean Hayes from the Office of Student Affairs and Andreas from the uh, treasurer's office and get together and find out how this clear the system's clearly broken and we need to make it less complicated and that like i said it, it comes in two prongs it's starting early and getting this done so in our first fall budget uh first fall meeting before the budget committee meets we can vote and have a new budget process and we can put that in the constitution and solve this problem and then that will also ensure consistency so one semester to the next student bodies know how they're getting money and when they're getting money so I completely agree that the budget system needs to be changed as someone who has worked in the budget system. It's not working right now and it's too complicated, but students also need to be able to provide their input on how the system should be changed. And it needs to not be just, you know, dumping it all on the budget committee or dumping it all on the Office of Student Affairs. It needs to be working together to put something new new, and bring that forward and putting it in the constitution. So when student groups and student treasurers do have questions, they can go and find it there. And we'll have an we'll have a way to, you know, do that sensically. 
If I could just have like 10 seconds just to make a quick response to that. And then because can I go after Frank, if you don't mind? I just not not to get into particulars, but um, for those of you who are, who are on the SBA, um, we did try to present this to the SBA as a whole preliminarily to start getting feedback and ideas. Um, and we weren't allowed to do that because the idea was considered to be too complicated. So that's where I feel like this is, you know, just another symptom of apathy. So if we need a new budget process, the budget committee is already working on it. Um, it just is a couple kinks worked out. It's already got Dean Hayes and Ann uh, from the Student Affairs. They've already been involved. Andreas is a great guy. Um, and he's mailing out checks. And if you still have reimbursements that need to get paid out, um, please email them to me because we are still processing that. A number of people have reached out to me and I wanted to mention that while I was here um, because they weren't sure about reimbursement. So if you do have a reimbursement, send that in and we can get that back to you. I just have a, a brief point if I can jump in with this. So um, I know the Constitution specifies that the money that is used by SBA is funded by student tuition. And so I think that it is important that student know, students know where the money is going and what it's being used for. And so during my the SBA meetings that I was able to participate in, I understand that the it appears that the budget process is complicated, but I do understand the need for having forms and to having documentation and to know where the money is going and what student organizations are doing, if that appears to seem complicated to student organizations, I think that it's time for revitalization where, where student organizations are used to having to document um, their activities and the funds and the money that they're spending. Um, I feel like the budget was the highlight of my my first year in SBA, um, and, I, and I appreciate the diligent work that was done and put into that. I do also think that presentation, things that are maybe like aesthetically pleasing videos and pictures might be helpful in ways that we can have the student, the SBA gauge in the presentation, because I do feel like even as a class rep, like I raised my hand to vote for something that, to be quite honest, I did not necessarily understand and couldn't repeat that or communicate that to my fellow peers or to other people in organizations. And so um, I do agree about if the complication is going through the forms and, and going through the process, I think that we can over, we can get over that um, that hump and 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 make it so that it's understandable. But I still do think that the steps that were taken, we can work from that. And the last quick point I know is that something that came up was with Jews, and I know that um, a, a number of people, even people that are are running right now, mentioned that Jews and requirements for certain clubs sometimes uh, overlooks the needs of socioeconomic status for some students. And so um, I apologize for the noise in the background, but. I do think that something that I was reading through the the spring budget um, packet and, and reviewing dues and 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 fundraising requirements for student organizations might be helpful going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. Um, I I'm the only one that has anything. Okay, think, great. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think based on, I was a one out VP, so I wasn't actually part of the budget committee. However, um. At the SBA meetings that I, that I was in attendance for, um, there that was like Maya had mentioned a hot topic, and I think it is important that we streamline and we take out a lot of extra steps that are unnecessary. If it is a complicated uh, process, then I think it's important to uh, declutter and make sure that we're just getting down to the what is actually required to uh, provide grant provide these funds to these organizations. And I think that can be streamlined very easily by just going through and and I don't know the process again, um, like Frank had mentioned, uh, it, it, it sounds like it's very uh, intensive. However, um, I, I do think that there is a way that we can all uh, come together and communicate this either through just having one particular meeting that is just about the, the, the way that we allocate funds, anything like that. Uh, I think that would be really vital to um, collectively coming together and figuring out a solution to this problem. I don't think that this is a solution that is insurmountable I, or an issue that is insurmountable. I think it's absolutely something that we collectively can all work together and come to a resolution that will um, ultimately help the student body. We're here to help the student body. So ultimately, I think that's something that we can sacrifice some of our time to uh, to get it worked out. All right, thanks, Michelle. Um, I believe that is everyone now. Uh, if that is the case, um, ben, 
running for secretary. Sorry, I told you I wouldn't forget about you, but um, I almost did. So Ben, if you wanna go ahead and give your um, little talk. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm running uncontested. Um, so I'll just give a quick spiel here. Um, as 1D president, looking for my next move for the SBA, I was considering a lot of positions and looking over the constitution. And, uh, you know, I think the secretary is regarded as the ugly duckling. No one really knows what they do. Um, but I'm ready to be that ugly duckling. I read the constitution. Um, and I read a lot about the, there's actually, uh, secretary supposed to take minutes, which I think actually be very vital, um, to the goals that we're all trying to promote here. We want everyone to be on the same page with SBA, whether they're at the meetings or not. Um, so I would take minutes and then culminate all those notes and put them in an email that goes out, you know, Monday after the Sunday SBA meeting. So everyone would know what was talked about, and what was discussed. Um, and Jim actually mentioned this is a great idea. I think taking those minutes and kind of transforming them onto a social media platform that a lot of people have um, that can get access to. Um, and this social media platform can go beyond minutes. Um, we just had a nice talk about the budget committee meeting, how that all works. I mean, even if we made, you know, an aesthetically pleasing flow chart that can be tweeted off that so students have access to that. I'm really just getting everyone on the same page because that's what I'm all about, you know. Um, and my big concern is one D president that people came up to me was what happened at the SBA meeting, what was said. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's said that goes through the cracks. And I think taking these minutes and having them go on Twitter and through email um, could be great. In addition, with the social media page, um, a lot of clubs advertise events that aren't, you know, the best advertised and they slip through the cracks as well. And SBA could tweet about those and that kind of thing and um, at orientation um, for upcoming 1Ls. Not mandatory that they follow, but heavily encouraged that they follow. Um, you know, I think of 1L, you'll pretty much listen to anything. So if they follow to that, follow those pages, they can be all connected. And um, yeah, that's what I want to say. And thank you very much. And I look forward to being your SBA Executive Board Secretary. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. Um, and good to note, Frank, um, appreciate that information. Um, so now moving away from SBA exec positions, we are going into liaison positions. Up first, we have honor board chairperson. Um, first candidate is Alexa Ain, if you'd like to speak. Hi, yes. Can everyone hear? I feel like that's the new thing everyone's asking. Um, so my name is Alexa Ain, and I am running to be your honor board chairperson. Currently, I serve as the 2L day rep for the honor board. So I've had the pleasure of serving on the honor board the past year and would like to step up and be the honor board chairperson in the coming year. A little about me, I've grown up in Baltimore County, Maryland my whole life. I went to Penn State for college, but came back here for law school, and this is really where I want to start my career. I want to go into employment law, and oftentimes employees are never given the due process rights to really get told why they were fired, what happened, or give any side of their story. And so the position of honor board chairperson and the values it stands for is something important to me both professionally and personally. Um, serving on the honor board the past year, I've attended one trial and we've had numerous investigations and I would just take these experiences that I've had both on the honor board as well as in my past college experiences and really take those values and experiences that I've had and implement them in the coming year. I felt a lot of the times we would come in and not really know what was going on or know the proper procedures. Um, I was elected last year as a runoff candidate and I wasn't contacted until our first hearing um, in the fall. And so I would definitely work to educate the board on what their responsibilities were on the honor board. I would make sure that they were aware of the different procedures as well as what conduct would be considered violations of the honor code, as well as working to make sure people were comfortable in front of the honor board if they were brought there. Obviously that's almost like a dirty word. No one really wants to get called in front of the honor board. We all came to Maryland because we respected the school and upheld its ideals and its values. And so we all signed the honor code when we came to school and want to uphold that. However, everyone should get their right to be heard. It should be fair and impartial. And so I would work to do that in my position as honor board chairman. Um, I hope you guys are all staying safe and thanks for being here today. And if there's any questions for me, let me know. Thanks. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. Um, next we have Joe. Bioko? Sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong. All right. Uh, 
right, so I'll begin by saying just thank you to the, ring, the ringleaders of this forum for bringing it together, Landon and Rachel and Eddie and Jamie and all you guys. Thanks for putting in the work to bring this together. I know it's nothing, not something you were required to do, so it's especially remarkable in that regard. Uh, just to begin my speech in support of my candidacy, I come from a supply chain background before coming to law school. So what that involved was, it was for an international grocery chain and involved a lot of taking on the role as a liaison between different departments of the company domestically and internationally. So it required a lot of going back and forth between all these different branches of the company to just bring people together, accomplish projects, report on performance. I think that applies well in my law school career as well as in my capacity as an SBA parliamentarian and peer advisor. I've had just these great opportunities to help out the law school community and hope to do more and take on greater responsibility as honor board chairman. And I wanted to identify a few areas for improvement, at least from just from a cursory glance of the honor code. It just looks like it hasn't been uh, brought up for review and amendments since 2017. So I think it's worth bringing up to the administrative committee who the board ref, uh, reports to at least to get the ball rolling on areas for improvement, especially some cross references within the web page advertising the honor code. Uh, it just doesn't look like they lead anywhere. I think that'd be one great source of improvement, at least to further define the expectations of confidentiality of proceedings. And uh, two other areas to help improve the clarity of the code and the integrity of the process is just to, to better ensure that at orientation, there, there's something in front of the students that lays out what the honor code is, where to find it, and that it's a, it's a coherent and cogent ver version of it that's properly updated. And I think it's necessary because these extraordinary circumstances that we're going through with COVID-19 are going to raise some novel issues with remote examinations. And I feel like it'll just become a, a, something further entangled for students, especially incoming students, if they're forced to take classes online going into the foreseeable future. And I'll, I'll keep my, I'll try to keep my time short and I'll, and I yield the rest of my time. But before I, I leave you guys, I just want to let, let you know that, you know, you, you're still allowed to just take a walk outside, get a breath of fresh air, and just try and do something to help somebody out. Visit a family member, give someone you haven't seen in a while a call, and give blood. The Red Cross has been giving me robo calls to try and get me to come back there. So it's a nice thing to do for the community, and there's, there's always a need for it, especially now. And thank you very much once again, and I hope to get your support on Tuesday. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Um, up next, we have position or candidates for ABA representative. First, we have Isabel Sturgill. Hi, Rachel. Thank you. So as Rachel said, my name is Isabel Sturgill, and I'm running for the ABA representative position. Um, I'm a rising 2L, so I have two things I just want to touch on today for this position. The first being that I do think that advocacy is the most important part of this position that's explicitly all that is in the Constitution about this position is being a liaison for our student body to the ABA and on the law, um, law student day division. And then also, I just want to hit on that. I do think this position could be expanded. I think a great job has been done. Um, I worked for a bar association before law school, so I think that's where my thoughts come from on this, that the ABA, ABA has more to offer us that we can tap into. Like, it's not about what they want, it's about what we want. Um, but first, I just want to the advocacy part of this. Um, I had three experiences prior to law school where I think I built transferable skills that could be used in this position. Um, briefly before law school, I had a PR position with an all male and drug rehabilitation facility. So a lot of my job was finding resources for our clients for after they completed our program. Um, as you can imagine, a lot of business leaders and governmental leaders don't look that greatly upon people coming out of recovery. Um, but we did secure resources to create jobs and get housing supplied for our clients once they graduated our program. Um, and then also during my tier gap time, I volunteered for a nonprofit. Um, it was for youth from tough circumstances. And a lot of my volunteer experience was just taking the goals that the board had for that nonprofit and carrying it out into the community. So just what they thought would be best for the kids. So during this, um, I wrote a lot of grants and secured in-kind donations 
and brought awareness to the community of the mission for these kids that we were helping. And then during my college time, I was the vice president for my sorority. We took a hard hit my senior year, so our fees were a lot. Um, so I had a meeting with our entire chapter to take their pulse on what they think should be done. And they wanted a reduction of expenses because they were afraid dues would get too high, we would lose members, and in turn, we would lose our house. Um, so this was a really tough job, just communicating with our house corporation. Um, they didn't, you know, take favorably upon college students. They didn't really want to do what we wanted. Um, but in the end, the goal was achieved and we had a reduction of $34,000 for the next school year. So that really helped. Um, so those are just things I've done in the past that would be similar to advocating for what our student body wants to the American Bar Association. Um, and then secondly, some of my ideas position would just be to do a panel in the spring focused on mental health. Um, when I worked at the Columbus Association, we did some programming on this and some of the ABA members worked with there were very cognizant about mental health in the legal profession. Um, as you have experienced, I think school is very stressful and the profession is very stressful. So just acknowledging these factors. Um, one of the programs we put on when I was at the Bar Association was with Brian Cuban, he's Mark Cuban's brother. He wrote the book called The um, Addicted Lawyer. So we brought him in for programming, and then we also did a lot of programming on diversity and inclusion. But the ABA does have these resources that I think we could utilize to put something on for our students about either of these areas. Um, and then lastly, selling memberships is not a goal of mine for this position. Um, there's a free membership that the ABA, the MSBA, and the BABC offer, which I think have a great, have a lot of great resources for students. Um, I'm a first generation law student, so I don't have a network of attorneys or resources that I can really tap into, but I think that bar associations are great for doing that. And that's just part of my goal is to bring awareness of what bar associations can do for students and not overtly, you know, um, just to convey that and leave it there for law students to do what they may need. Um, so thank you for your time today. Thanks to everyone for putting this platform together, and I hope to have your vote on April 14th. Awesome. Thank you very much, Isabel. Um, James Welch, you're now up. Thank you very much, Rachel. Um, for those of you who, who don't know me, um, a lot of you do, but for those who don't, I'm James Welch. I'm a rising 3L, uh, and I'm running for re-election as ABA representative. Um, when I ran for the position last year, um, like uh, Isabel, I looked at the uh, Constitution and it said it was an advocacy role um, where the ABA representative acted as a liaison between the American Bar Association and the student body and also with the Maryland State Bar Association. And what I discovered um, when the ABA began onboarding me is that they created the role to sell ABA student memberships, uh, the, the premium memberships. You can obviously join for free. There's a lot of awesome resources that you get absolutely free as a law student um, and you don't have to pay for it. Um, the premium membership is $25 annually. They have this rep reward system where ABA reps from different schools compete to win prizes um, based on who can sell more of these premium memberships. And so I decided and I have not um, solicited for selling memberships. Um, I dispensed with the sales pitches and I decided to focus on advocacy for the student body. Um, so this year I've engaged with the student body in a variety of ways through tabling uh, and other forms of communication. I've heard from several students and um, passed those concerns on um, to the relevant bar associations. I also meet monthly with the Maryland State Bar Association Young Lawyers Section Executive Council. Um, they, I'm, I'm, a mem I'm a member of that um, through this liaison position um, and I share upcoming events on campus and also um, concerns of the student body and I also hear about upcoming um, Maryland State Bar Association events, some of which I've emailed out to the student body. But one of the things um, that I try to do is not spam your inbox because I don't know about you, but I get so many emails. I already get an email from every day from the ABA. I get one every day from the Maryland State Bar Association. I'm in the Baltimore County Bar Association. I get email every day from them. So it's just a lot of emails and that's why I have to mention all the emails from the campus. So I only try to send emails when it's really important, but know that I am working for you even if I'm not sending an email. Um, one of the things that we did achieve this year, thanks to the feedback from all of you, um, especially the graduating students, 
um, is with the COVID-19 crisis, um, a lot of uh, jurisdictions are thinking about canceling their bar examination scheduling it for the fall. And so the ABA Law Student Division worked and got the ABA Board of Governors to pass a policy resolution urging states that cancel or postpone their uh, July examinations to allow graduates to practice with supervision uh, of a attorney until uh, they they take the bar and become uh, officially licensed to practice. Um, and I'm lobbying right now the Maryland State Bar Association. We have a meeting next week to take a similar posture on this issue. So um, it's something that I heard from a lot of students about, and it's something that I've been working um, with the uh, national and regional uh, bar associations to try to make happen. Um, I promise that I'm not going to send you unsolicited um, premium membership offers that you don't want or need if I'm elected, and I'm not going to spam your inbox with stuff that's of no relevance to you. I, of course, would love to connect students or student organizations to resources if they wish to become more involved in the Bar Association, and I hope that, um, Isabel, you, your panel is a great idea. Um, one of the problems that I've had is um, getting people interested in helping me out with the role. Um, so even if um, you're not elected, I hope that you would uh, join the team with me and help me out with uh, planning some of these things. Um, and I think that it's a great idea. Um, what I do promise to do, I continue to, to promise to advocate for you at both the national and the state level and keep an open ear and pass your concerns on uh, to, on both the national and state level. Uh, this year, I worked hard to make sure your voices are heard and I've been proud to serve as your ABA representative this year. And I hope I can count on your vote on Tuesday so I can continue to serve you in the next year. Thank you so much. Rachel, are you there? Me? No, the other Rachel. Uh, the I think we might have lost her, so let me pull up the list and see who's next. Thank you. Uh, what have we got? We've got... Thank you very much, James. Oh, okay, there you are. Sorry, I cut out for a hot second. Um, okay. Did we just lose her again? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, sorry. No, I'm back. I'm back. I swear. Can we see me? Okay. Next person is um, Shelby ba Shelby Brown for 3D class. All right. Hey guys. Um, first, thank you all for um, setting this up and for everyone taking time out of their day to be here. I think that's really awesome that we can set this up uh, independently and. So without further ado, I'm Shelby Brown. I'm running for the 3D president. Um, the class president is an advocate and a representative for the 3L class, in addition to planning barristers well. As a 3D president, I will advocate you as soon to be graduates and represent your best interests for the SBA. Um, I'm eager and enthusiastic to serve on the SBA. I'm very passionate about public service. I enjoy working on a team and I have a lot of experience with leadership. For example, in undergrad, I served as the president of the Panhellenic Association, which for those of you that don't know, it's the umbrella organization for all of sorority life. So I was responsible for 16 chapters and over 2000 undergraduate sorority women, not a small feat. <laughs> Additionally, I was in a sorority and responsible for planning my chapter's formal event for five semesters. So this experience has taught me about leadership and advocacy and aptly for the 3D president event planning. But my goals as 3D, 3L day president go far beyond planning barristers. My first goal would be to start a career initiative with the CDO to effectively assist graduating students entering a new legal landscape in the wake of COVID-19. Starting your career after law school is already very stressful and complicated. And now to compound that with the additional uncertainty of the legal profession and it's a whole new beast, especially not knowing how the current delay or cancellation of the bar may impact the next graduating class in the competitive job market. So I'll open an anonymous question forum to ask you what your needs or concerns are so that I can work with the CDO and make sure those needs get met. Um, 
Second, my goal is to urge the SBA Executive Council to be more visible and active on campus. This has been something that's talked about um, across the board for all of the Executive Council candidates, um, but I want to reiterate a lot of their um, ideas about being more visible and active, um, sending out upcoming meetings or meeting minutes and proposals. Um, I wanna encourage the SBA to engage and communicate with their constituencies as far as uh, the different class positions go. Uh, that's what I would do for the 3D class. Um, and as the 3D class president, I would also serve on the budget committee, another hot topic <laughs> this election cycle. Um, the past, the budget process was uh, very confusing and rushed. I am in, involved in a handful of student organizations and I felt very overwhelmed by that. So I would love to figure out the best way um, to engage student organizations in the budget process, make changes that are effective and um, really get down to the, the overall goal. Um, finally, the primary role for 3D class president is planning barristers ball in the spring. Barristers is the big event that many students look forward to every spring, but it's often very expensive. I want to one, make barristers more affordable for all students, to provide opportunities for student input and engagement and planning, and three, plan a great night that is fun and accessible for all. To make barristers more affordable, I will look to diligently hold effective fundraisers in the fall so that ticket prices are as low as possible and one consistent price, not dependent on when you're able to buy a ticket. I would also like to coordinate a formal wear swap so students have an option to wear something new without feeling the need to buy something new. And I wanna hold it in an area of Baltimore that's easy to access with parking, so everyone can get there safely. As I mentioned, in undergrad, I planned numerous events similar to Barristers, so I know what it takes to put on a great evening. In conclusion, I'm qualified to serve as a 3D president because I have leadership and in, in event planning experience. I want to represent and advocate for the 3D class so that we can leave Carrie Law on a high note. Together, we can have an effective career support in such uncertain times, create a more visible and active SBA, and have a killer Barristers ball. Vote Shelby Brown for your last Carrie Law hurrah. Thanks, guys. Be well. Awesome. Thank you very much, Shelby. Um, next, 3D class president, we have Rebecca Carlone. Hi. Hi, everyone. I started my timer because anyone who knows me knows I, if I didn't have a timer, I'd probably go for like 14 to 15 like hours. So, sorry. Uh, so, as you may know, I uh, served as the president of our class this year and the vice president of the class uh, of my first year. And my major, uh, I guess, platform and idea was was trying to make more tangible change. And it started as a running joke, but it was something I really believed in was getting these water fountains installed. Everyone in my class is laughing and people who don't know me are also laughing. So basically it, it, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but my, my whole argument was one, this is a really, really easy win for the administration to show that they care about student input. Two, it's more sanitary because God forbid, I know I don't think it's gonna happen that we're gonna have a pandemic during our law school career, but if we did, um, it would be a lot easier for things to spread uh, via unsanitary water fountains. And um, also it's just it, it's just like a little quality of life thing that can, uh, that can improve. So luckily we did get those water fountains installed over spring break. Unfortunately, we cannot enjoy them, so I am sorry, but it is it is kind of a testament to sometimes things take a while and sometimes you have to keep at um, even for small changes, you have to keep at it. And that's really what my entire life has been. That's what my entire personality has been is to stay on top of things um, and to effectively advocate for change. Um, I think that as a as someone who served on the budget committee this year, I uh, was really honored to serve with such a really interesting group of people, a really excited group of people. And I am a really passionate advocate and I'm not afraid to speak my mind and say what is um, best for both our class, but also taking everyone else into account and trying to balance the needs of everyone. Uh, additionally, like Shelby said, uh, one of the big parts of the 3D uh, role of president is to plan barristers. I also served on my uh, sorority's executive board for, for a few years, so I, I, I planned a lot of these formals um, out in between law school and uh, undergrad. I worked in student affairs where I also had to plan these graduate formals. This is kind of like second nature to me. And I do agree with Shelby that I think one of the biggest problems with barristers is that 
you are not paying the value of barristers. You're not paying, you're not receiving $80 worth of experience in return. So I wanna make sure that um, I balance keeping the quality of barristers high, making sure that the lines for the bars are nice and short. I know that my class, I think had diametrically opposed barristers first and second year. I think uh, this past year, they did a much better job of, of ensuring that you're able to access food and, and drinks. So I just wanna make sure that we're able to balance keeping that budget um, nice and small, uh, helping students who can't pay at all for barristers, but uh, shouldn't be included. So starting a fund for those students as well. Um, additionally, we have already had some fundraisers. Um, we had the clothing sale, which was far, fairly successful between the t-shirts and um, the sweatshirt sales. Uh, so we had t-shirts over the summer for orientation, sweatshirt sales a little bit later, we've already raised a couple thousand dollars. This semester, we were supposed to have a spring fundraiser. Unfortunately, again, uh, that was canceled, but we do have some really good ideas. And um, I wanna shout out real quick, um, Spria, Brooke, and, and Tori for designing these really nice designs. And that will hopefully get to implement those designs in the fall clothing sale. And all of the proceeds from the designs that we created will get to go back to our class for the 2021 barristers rather than um, rather than it, it kind of getting delayed even further. So we're still reaping the rewards of our uh, of our work. So I see my time is up, but I uh, will be sending out an email to everyone. And before I completely close out, I do just want to apologize for to my class. Um, I thought this email about the, the, the form went out live yesterday. I've checked the email. Apparently it only got sent back to the like the the main uh, like class president email and not the actual entire listserv, but I'll make sure that this link goes out and I'm sure Shelby and I and the rest of our group will be able to get this link out to everyone. And finally, I just wanna remind people that there are five positions and five people running in our cabinet. So I really hope that everyone who's running, um, this is a really good group of people. So we would really all like to work together. So make sure that you you consider that when you are voting. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Appreciate it. Up next, we had 2E class rep, Hannah Wardell. She has been emailing me. She's having connection issues. She apologizes, um, but will not be able to make it. Um, so moving along to the 2D class. Candidates for uh, president, the first person we have is Cole Abel. Cole, if you would like to take it away. Hi, can you hear me? Great. Marilyn, I'll call. All right, hi everyone. My name is Cole Abel and I'm running to be your 2D class president. I just wanna start off by saying, uh, wishing everyone in this forum running for, either watching or running for a position uh, that they're hopefully staying safe during these unprecedented times for them and their loved ones. And I think if the coronavirus and the epidemic we're going through is just one thing, it's that life comes at you fast and we have to be prepared. Uh, I think this, I think the school maybe fumbled the ball a little bit and being fully prepared for, to deal with the coronavirus. And I feel the student government can definitely take over that role of helping the students transition to an online school as well as any other issues that might come forward. And I think something that I realized being a sense of family is and that doesn't have to be someone you're related to it can be through students and your friends at the school i think by fostering a sense of community for everyone here can really do leaps and bounds in improving our welfare student body i have a, uh, three ways i think we can do that the first would be through having socials and interactions with each other in a fun sense and hopefully once this epidemic is over we could all go to a bar to get a drink because i'm sure we'll all need one the other way you can do this would be through an educational meeting, such as having panels of lawyers come into the school, come into the school for the 2D class to attend and make a have meeting greets to not only network with each other, but the legal community in Baltimore at large. Also, a little bit about myself. I am from the Baltimore area originally, born and raised here. And growing up in the Baltimore community, I've seen a lot of um a lot of poverty and a lot of good that can be done in the city. And I feel as law students living here, we have a we have a responsibility of using our privilege to fight the prejudice that is out there in the city, whether that be through the clinics that our school offers, which learning today that the evening students don't even get a chance to participate in, which 
that just disgusted me to hear that, as well as things outside of law that we can help out with by volunteering at local inner, inner city schools, cleaning up parks in Baltimore, is making the community better. I think by, by, by doing these three different things, we as a grade and a class can come together in a whole new way, in a whole new light. I also think that being open and honest and transparent is a, something that the student government has to improve on. I think by taking minutes in the meetings and releasing those to everyone, which has been mentioned through social media, that can do wonders for the grade and seeing what we're talking about and what we're discussing. Because as someone who was always interested, I wasn't able to find out being on the outside looking in what the student government was doing. Uh, so I think by being transparent, think as long as that nature, we can do great wonders to the school. Uh, again, I wish everyone the best of safety during these unprecedented times. Take care. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, up next, we have Mason Buckman, to class president. Nathan, you're muted. You need to unmute, Nathan. Can you hear me now? Hello. Yes. Okay. yes, we can hear you now. I don't know, it keeps muting me for some reason. I apologize. Um, I was saying I hope everyone is having a good day. I know with this week has religious significance, and I appreciate everybody being here for those who are watching this recording. Um, uh, this global pandemic has illustrated to me the uh, community that we have at Cary Law. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I chose this school, because uh, there was such a collaborative, supportive environment. And that's something that I'm really proud of. And I'm, I'm proud that our, our 1D board was able to um, advance. Um, I had the pleasure of serving as one of our class representatives with Rachel Savage and Maya Foster is one of the uh, one of the highlights of my 1L year was representing our student body at these SBA meetings and, and community outreach events. Um, I'm running to be your 2D class president uh, because I believe in engagement. I believe in community service. Uh, my two principal objectives are uh, to engage the community and to engage our student body. And I think these two ideas are um, supportive of, one, of each other. For example, in the community engagement idea, I want to amplify our student organizations as as uh, little advocacies of, of way, ways we can engage the community. For example, um, last semester we were working with the Red Cross Community Health Walk where we helped raise over $1 million um, for critical research. And then we will also uh, help raise resources for the Baltimore Child Abuse Center. I think both of these two are just examples of how we can engage our communities. And I know that our other organizations such as BOSS, such as Mel's. Um, these class uh, groups are wonderful structural systems that we already have in place that we can amplify to further the goals that we have that that, uh, that are important to us, that, that are part of who we are as engaged students, as champions of our causes. I wanted to speak a little bit about the second point that I raised about student empowerment. Um, that is, I was just speaking with someone else about how they had already um, incoming one out about how they had already felt a sense of community with us uh, already without having been in the classroom yet. And I think that's something that we can amplify through having um, community events, through having events on campus, and through having a transparent, engaged student body. So in closing, I want to say that I'm here to support you, to empower you, to advocate for you. Thank you for your support, your time, and your engagement. Uh, thank you, Rachel. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, next for 2D class president, we have Annie Rock. Get away, Annie. Annie, you're muted. Hey, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so everybody, my name is Annie Rock. For those of you that don't know me, I'm from Chicago. I grew up there. I went to the University of Oklahoma and um, I to go to Maryland last year. Um, I'm running for 2D class president because first and foremost, because I really love this group of people. I've loved my classmates and I've had a really good time engaging with them. I didn't run for SBA in the fall because I wasn't sure I could commit the time and I didn't know what my academic 
life would look like. But after this year, I'm confident that I have the time and the energy to commit to this role. Um, specifically, I'm really worried about what the coronavirus um, impact is going to have on our education. Not so much um, even when we, especially when we go back to school and things get back to normal, um, we know that there are significant things that are going to happen this year that aren't normal, like OCIs being pushed back January and February. Um, we really don't know. We're registering for classes later than usual. Things are going to look really different. I think that I have the skill set to help us navigate this time. Um, I also have really enjoyed connecting with my own section and kind of taking the lead on getting us to do social things together and relax and kind of uh, take away some of the stress of school. And I think I, my success with being able to do that with my class is something I want to bring to the whole, with my section is something I want to bring to the whole 2D class. Um, I'm really excited um, to advocate for the 2D class specifically and to focus on the problems that arise for us and take on that challenge. Um, I want to create problems for everybody. Um, and my biggest thing is I, I uh, consider myself um, pretty, in a, pretty, pretty humble and pretty willing to listen to other people's ideas. I don't, I wouldn't take this role on to facilitate my agenda, but rather facilitate bringing the ideas from my class to fruition. Um, I had experience in large student organizations in college, mostly committed to community service or academic integrity, um, where that was kind of my role is more, uh, is more, you, here's the idea, okay, Annie, help make it happen through the operation side of those organizations. Um, my biggest points I want to drive home is I think that this year and with the changes coming up, it's going to take a lot of commitment, um, to, to make things, to, to thrive during this time. Um, and I think that the 2D class, um, SBA as a whole, whoever's on, whoever's in the 2D class that represent, that's on SBA, um, will have to uh, drive the charge with commitment. First thing is commitment to our education and career. Um, figuring out ways to spin this situation into a way that we can thrive. Um, and it, 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 working with the CDO to have more firm nights, um, uh, um, working with student orgs to create more networking events um, and things that will help the class as a whole. My next point is commitment to each other. Um, and as an SBA, I think we need to do, and as a second as a second year class, a uh, good job supporting events put on by other organizations. Um, a lot of my friends, and I'm sure a lot of y'all's friends are stepping up and taking on bigger roles in student orgs, and we need to do a better job promoting them and making those events as successful as possible. That um, informal class hangouts, I love I love the um, happy hours. I think they're fun and I'm there, but I also wanna find more ideas to engage people that don't maybe love happy hours, including like a class, maybe a class picnic or doing intramurals or uh, going to a museum as a group, things like that. Stress support, which I think a lot of people talked about. And then um, programming, I think, we can do a better job programming, um, uh, bringing everybody in. I've heard this for I've heard this all day. Is like let's get engage as many people as possible with SBA. So let's bring more people in. And then lastly, commitment to the community. Um, something I've done this year that I loved is be a cure mentor for the uh, UMB Cure program. Um, there's kids from Baltimore City Public Schools that come, and we them. That might sound overwhelming to. Uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, not a huge time commitment. Three to, it can be from two to eight hours a week, depending on what you want to do, and you really get to create a relationship. Um, so when we work with the community, I think that the UMB system has a lot of things in place that the law school hasn't taken advantage of. Um, I think, and um, and that's somewhere that I've also gotten to volunteer through uh, Project Feast, um, another UMB initiative that's led by the med school that I don't think enough law students have um have taken so in closing i eight ways for you i want to notify you guys of the ways because i think people want to do it now it's just facilitating making those connections thank you great thank you very much andy um so going into 2d class vice president we have cynthia ferris cynthia take it away can everyone hear me 
Um, so hi, my name is Cynthia Ferris and I am running for 2D vice president. First of all, thanks so much for everyone who organized this forum. Um, you guys are awesome. Um, I also want to say that I know this is a really tough time for, for everyone. And I just want everyone to know that I'm here as a friend. If you're bored, if you, you know, want to vent or talk, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, so I think the most important roles of basically any SBA position um, is communication and repre uh, representation. So I want to be that person um, as the class VP um, that you're expecting emails from, not only uh, regarding social events, but about upcoming meetings and discussions. Um, I want to implement some sort of platform where students see that there are meetings planned, see the possible topics and can weigh in on these topics um, ahead of time to really get their voice across. Um, and I just really want the SBA to be more, you know, involved in, in communication so that the students can uh, be more effectively and equally um, represented. Um, I do have a couple ideas that I'd like to um, do as the class VP. And one of those is I would like to start a class Volo team. So the Volo League is a league where you get to get a, a team together and you pay and those funds go directly to funding um, free organized sports teams for children in Baltimore who could not otherwise um, pay to play on these teams. So I think that's just a really fun way to get involved. Um, in the community and give back to the community. And I also do want to continue all the great work that um, the SBA did this semester with the Baltimore Child Abuse Center. Um, I think we did a lot of great stuff and I would love to get more people involved in that and do a little bit more with that. Um, but most importantly, I'd love to hear everyone's ideas, questions, concerns, comments, because my job is to represent um, this class and so your ideas are, are of utmost importance and I'd love to hear those so I can convey those and uh, meet your needs and get done what you need to um, or want to get done. So um, thank you again for organizing this everyone and please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions regarding this or you know if you just want to talk. Thanks guys. Great, thank you very much. Next we have class representative positions. Um, first, I'd like to ask Tanisia Brothers Sutton if you'd like to go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? I'm going to assume yes. <laughs> um, so my name is yes, Tanisia. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Tanisia Brothers Sutton. Um, I'm running to be your 2D class rep. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm from Chesapeake, Virginia. Um, I'm now at law school with you all. Um, last year, I ran to be a senator um, for the USGA, and I had a great time. I was able to kind of bridge the gap between the law school and the other um, schools that are in the UMB system. Um, we had a great time just planning events to make sure that the law students come out to those, and I think that was good for you all. Um, now I'm running to be class representative because I like to just get more involved with um, the law school class. I think I can bring a lot of the things that we did in USGA back to the SBA and just playing different events and being able to make sure that um, the 2D class feels like a family and we are all able to get together. I know that's something that everyone's been talking about today. And I think that we can really make that possible. Um, other than that, um, I think that being the SBA representative is very important. Um, I had a great time just coming into those few meetings that I did come to um, through the SBA, and I saw how um, you guys really try to get things done, and I feel like I can be an asset to that. Um, so yes, um, just vote for me. Um, I am contested with Rachel, and um, so I won't take much of you guys' time, so thank you. Great, thank you, Tanisia. Um, as Tanisia said, she and I uh, were running uncontested for class rep. I will keep this short. You all know me by now, I'm Rachel Savage. Um, I am a current 1L class representative. Um, in that position, I really focused on service. So I built a relationship with the Baltimore Child Abuse Center. We held a number of drives. We did a food drive and a blanket drive. We also did an event creating um, Thanksgiving packages for children in need. And recently, as in last night, we ended up raising $250 for um, BCAC to make uh, activity packs for kids who have to stay in the hospital. It's really important to me to continue this relationship with BCAC. 
Um, that being said, I also have a couple more initiatives that I'd like to start. One of them is with something called the Homeless Period Project, which raises sanitary products for individuals um, who are unhoused. And another one is um, I'm starting a relationship with an individual at the Baltimore City Public School District. We can engage uh, with the kids and have uh, opportunities to help out there. Service to the local community is really important to me. I am a transplant to Baltimore. I am from South Carolina. I'm not local to here. The city has opened its arms for me and I would like for us to be able to do that for them. So I do have those initiatives in place, but um, the second prong of what I'm interested in is not just serving the community, but also serving the students. Um, it, representation matters, it is important, and I appreciate the opportunity to represent um, the students that I've had this last year, um, and I look forward to continuing that into the next year. So thank you very much for your time, um, and we'll get on with the other positions. Um, so next we have uh, honor board representative, so if Harry Hall wants to go ahead and speak, I believe it's Andrew Hall on the list, but you go by Harry, right, Harry? Yeah, sure do. Um, and I actually just sorted out with the parliamentarian yesterday that my name should at least have an, an annotation that says Harry next to it on the ballot. Um, so whatever you want to call me, it's fine. Um, yeah, so I'm running for honor board because I, generally value honesty and transparency in my life and it felt like honor board was a good fit for my personality um i think that you know words are cheap but um during the whole discussion about grading regarding you know regarding covid etc i was one of the administrators of the um, carry law covid 19 discussion page um, because it felt it was important for students to have a voice. Um, <clears throat> additionally, we ended up, well, I, I ended up changing sort of my plan for the whole thing. It was originally going to be, we'd have these discussions and then I would, I was planning on writing up a summary, but in the interest of democracy and inclusion, we put it to a poll and ended up not doing that. So um, just kind of, putting my money where my mouth is as far as my values, as far as, you know, governance. And I know that um, honor board is not quite the same thing as being in SBA. Um, what I would say to that is that I can, I'll, I'll take the same values that I um, was acting on in creating the, the COVID discussion page into honor board and um, that said, I think that there are a few changes that I'd like to see. For example, the current standard by which Honor Board can find you guilty is a preponderance of the evidence, um, which to me feels too low given the potential stakes of these things. And I mean, I'm not necessarily saying that raising that threshold um, simply is the answer, but I think that there's definitely a better system that we could work out with the SBA. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I didn't honestly didn't have that much to say, so I'm gonna end it there. Okay, thank you, Harry. Appreciate it. Um, next for honor board representative, we have Kat Jiranek, and I am sorry if that is not how you say your last name. Jiranek, but I've heard worse, so that was good. Um, you know, my name is Kat Jiranek. My real name is Harriet, so that's why it does say that on there. Um, so hopefully on the ballot, it will say cat because those names like don't go together at all. Um, also, I know we're getting to the end, so I will try and keep this short. Um, I'm running to be the 2L day honor board rep. Uh, first off, I want to start by saying that I understand the significance of this position for our law school experience and sustaining our sense of community and trust in UMD and also how we will tackle the professional world as well. Um, as rep, I want to make sure everyone feels confident that we're all playing by the same rules and that we're confident in the school. Um, as we all know, COVID has fundamentally changed our lives, um, especially how we operate in this academic setting. And this will create challenges and issues regarding the honor roll, and I take these issues very seriously, um, remote learning related or not. Um, and if elected, I will work with the board to ensure that the honor and academic integrity are upheld. 
Um, I want to serve as a resource to help students understand the code and the rules of professional conduct and help explain, you know, the school's position and instances that may be blurry regarding this remote uh, learning and the things that come after. Um, I am very comfortable in these roles. I have had previous experience. Uh, during my time on honor board in college, I helped oversee and implement new reformative ways to work with people. Um, we looked at the totality of each situation to understand why each person had acted improperly. And just like Harry said, we had a pretty low, um, you know, review. So we actually ended up changing that as well and changed that in our bylaws. Um, I'm also confident in my abilities to understand complicated circumstances and making judgment calls. Um, I hold our honor code in the highest regard and I would be so grateful to welcome the opportunity to represent the class. I also just want to say I'm really proud of our class. Um, I think we've done a really great job advocating for ourselves and the student body as a whole. Um, so again, thank you for tuning in and good luck to everyone with finishing up the semester. Great, thank you very much, Kat. Um, and now last but definitely not least, we have Rachel Morrissey, who is also running for Honor Board Rep. Rachel? Hi, can everyone hear me? Awesome. Okay, so I am as the last person here. I realize that we have been here for two hours and I have a lot of power right now, given that everybody is waiting on me to finish. But with a lot of power comes great responsibility. Um, and I just want to, you know, I am rerunning as your honor board rep. I have had the privilege of serving this year and I, you know, Kat and um, Harry are great candidates as well. So I want to, you know, thank them for participating in this because it is an important position. Um, I will keep this short and sweet. I also uh, served on my honor board in college and we redid the entire code that hadn't been redone since 1950s. So it had a lot of work to do. Um, during my time this year, I, uh, you know, taking action is great, um, but I also have learned to show restraint. So like Alexa, I think mentioned, we had a lot of investigations, but only one trial. Um, and I ended up having to recuse myself because I wanted to protect the impartiality of the process. So I have been tested and I um, and I want people to know that by voting for me, I we don't play by our own rules. We all have to follow the rules and that includes when to recognize for yourself that you might be biased. Um, I, uh, just real briefly, I understand I understand human nature. I worked previously as a domestic violence advocate before coming here and going into that field, I was very much pro victim. Not that I'm not now, but I'm very much like did not want to hear the other side, did not want to see the abuser as anybody but, but going through that process and learning, I learned the importance of due process and why it's important that everybody, including abusers, have a right to be heard. Um, and I you know, was able to get in and deal with very complex, messy situations. So I understand human nature and I understand why people can make mistakes. Um, I also think it's important that the process and the integrity of the process is upheld. Um, you know, we're preparing to, to, to enter the bar and the honor code for us is the equivalent of the professional rules of conduct. So I'm going to end actually with a question. Um, I know plot twist is I would like to see for the next year um, the honor code done in orientation. So my question is really for the chairpersons running and the new presidents is what um, what will you do to like sort of help ensure regardless of whether I'm on the board or not um, to ensure that this is brought up as an, an orientation because it wasn't not that I recall it wasn't really talked about in ours. So with that, you know, um, I hope that you know, I would love to serve again and continue to be this voice, um, but thank you all and stay well. Great, thank you so much to Rachel. Thank you so much to all of the candidates for being here. Thank you to James for being in charge of IT, Nathan and Landon and everyone else who wanted to set this up. Thank you. Um, that being said, I recognize it is 1.54. Um, if you have questions for candidates, if you would type your name into the chat function and I will call on you. If you do not have questions or have very strong opinions that we should just end this and email questions or do something else. please. Um, I was wondering, um, Rachel asked a question of the honor board chair people. Did we want to have them answer that question? 
love it. Sure. Honor board chair people. Let's hear it. Is there a specific order you wanted us to go in, Rachel? Or if you have an answer, you can go ahead. Okay. <laughs> and I just would like to say I would love the help with anything as well. So whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um if I recall correctly, during I'm O two L, so last year we were given a presentation with Professor Conlin um, about the honor code. It was given during one of the homework assignments, and I was more than willing and prepared to step up and do that if elected this time around. I thought it was extremely informative and definitely made sure we were aware of what the honor code was and what standard we would be held to if um, we chose that path or anything like that. So I would definitely be available um during that time to do that and be willing to meet with any student that wanted to discuss the honor code i think it would be extremely beneficial and easy to implement into the orientation period thank you alexa um it looks like joe is no longer here um so according to participants list so that may be it um for rachel's question unless anyone um has comments other than that Uh, the recording will be generated. Um, it takes a few hours since everybody's using WebEx now. It takes a few hours to generate. Once it generates, um, I'll generate a link and then I'll send it out to the people who participated and then they will they can feel free to email it out. And I'll also be sending it in my candidate email, which will go to everybody who's voting. Um, Eddie, to your question, I can go ahead and ask that now. Um, you did not miss it. So, uh, Thank you, Eddie, for this very good question. Uh, to class president and the 2D VP candidate, the question is, as a member of the budget committee, what factors would make you vote no against a proposal for reserve or supplemental restricted funding? Um, I'm not gonna put anyone on the spot. If someone has an immediate answer, feel free to jump in. Um, I can go if no one else is. So, uh, so I feel pretty strongly about utilizing the budget as much as we can, um, while also making sure that our money is being spent efficiently. So to say no to a budget proposal from the restricted fund specifically, if a group has consistently been asking for money and not spending it, um, that would be a, a no for me. Um, if this opportunity does not reach the bulk of students and that is in particular for evening students, I would vote no. Um, uh, oh, it's the same thing. Um, so basically for me, it's just a matter of um, to say yes to a proposal. Is this money gonna be used efficiently? Is this money um, going to be used for students that um, are not just friends of the person who is requesting it and does this money allow for the spending to be across all classes and across all the day and evening people Rebecca, um anyone else um yeah I, I can go if you guys can hear me was this for two um two l presidents as well or just three l I think it was all, all presidents as well, all class. Yeah, I guess to um, I like just for a second what Rebecca said um, the, the budget for like to go into reserve budget should be able to affect the greatest amount of students possible. Uh, if it only would impact a small number of students or play favorites, I don't think that should be something that we should go into. But if the funding can go to helping the student body at large and helping reaching the most amount of people, then I believe it should be the supplemental. Restricted funding should be used. Thanks, Cole. Shelby, did you have something? Yeah, I would just like to add. Um, I think Cole and Rebecca brought up good points about it reaching the maximum number of students. Um, but I also think I would consider um, how much the event would weigh on that organization's mission and purpose. A lot of organizations are young and don't have um, a lot of funding or fundraising that they can use for their own. So if they wanted to hold a big event, like $500 doesn't go very far. Um, so I wouldn't hold it against them if the, um, the, the event furthers the purpose. 
Um, I would also uh, not significantly add weight to um, their previous use of funds because leadership in student organizations changes every year and I would in turn look for support for their plans and how they've substantiated requesting the amount that they did. Um, that's all I have to add. Thank you very much, Shelby. Um, any of the other I president something? candidates? Yes, go for it. All right, hi. Um, I would add that I would make this process simpler. Um, I've been in the FBA meeting where we've been discussing the budget and budget proposals and we had a vote on particular groups such as the Business Law Society wanted some funds for a trip to Delaware. Um, so I would, I would streamline this process a little bit more working with, um, working with our budget committee specifically on how people can ask for funds and to make that a simpler process, a more transparent process so that when we make the decision as an executive body people know why we're making this decision. People know what's going on behind the curtain. And I think it's tr trying to pull that apart so we can see actually how our student government's working for the student body. And I think that's an important process. So I would go for transparency. In specific to Eddie's question, I, I would vote no if it's too particularized to a specific specialized uh, situation. I, I think it's important to use these funds to amplify the, our carry law name, our carry law community. So I'll be looking for events that uh, amplify what we do and who we are as a um, as an engaged engaged body. Thank you. Great, thank you, Nathan. Um, any other thoughts? Um, I had a question. If if, if that's all right, Rachel, for the uh, SBA president candidates. Well, can I? I'm sorry. Can I quickly answer Eddie's question? Yeah. Uh, I know I'm not actually a, a class president. Um, nominee, but surprise, actually, so reserve funding is approved by both the bu budget committee and the executive board of the SBA because right now the process is a little convoluted. The SBA board votes to approve or deny, then sends their decision to the budget committee, and then the budget committee approves or denies the SBA's decision. And if they don't agree, it just goes round and round in circles. So when we talk about the, comp the complex nature of the process, that's what we're talking about. Um, something Maya said. A long time ago, um, if you guys remember, was that like there still needs to be something written down. Like if the process is too complicated, then the answer is not to just throw everything away. Um, I completely agree with that. This process needs like a rubric, um, and, th and that's what I really believe is like it needs. It doesn't need. There's so much arbitrariness to to the the process right now, and that needs to be removed. Student organizations should know if they can be approved or denied for supplemental funding based on a very like laid in stone, like very obvious, easy to understand set of guidelines. Thank you for letting me jump in there. Thanks, Landon. James? Thank you, Rachel. Um, I, my question is for the SBA president candidates. Um, I think that we've seen a lack of transparency um, from the administration and from the representatives that the SBA sends to the administration in terms of the COVID-19 response. Um, there's been decisions that have been made that we didn't even know were happening. For instance, um, on Wednesday at the SBA meeting, I asked about uh, summer grading because summer classes are going to be remote. And so I said, is the faculty going to consider um, summer grading and and how that's going to be, if that's going to be pass fail or graded? And Jimmy indicated that the decision had already largely been made and that they were leaning toward going graded since students will have those expectations already going in. And the reason we changed this semester is because students didn't have the expectations of going remote. And so people know what they're getting into. Uh, we didn't even know that that was being discussed. Um, so we couldn't submit input like we could for the pass fail decision. Um, so how are you going to work to increase transparency um, when you're meeting with the administration officials and talking about all these different policy changes that affect all of us? Um, also, the move to credit-based grading, per, per credit, um, not credit-based grading, the per credit um, tuition structure. I found out about that after I matriculated. Nobody told me anything when I was applying. And I found out after my first semester that in my second year, I was going to be moving to a uh, per credit uh, billing structure. So, um, yeah, just how are you going to increase transparency about decisions that are happening so we can even submit feedback and the content of those discussions? Great question. Awesome question, James. 
um, SCA presidential candidates, if you'd like to weigh in, you have the floor. Yeah, that's a that's a really great question. And uh, what what a, I, I think that this has been brought up multiple times in this meeting. And and for those a lot of you who are are currently on the the call and and maybe some of you who are watching it recorded later, who were able to join that SBA meeting, to learn a lot of that stuff because we had to poke and prod at the current uh, executive board was kind of devastating. How devastating that. The, the feedback that was received regarding mandatory pass-fail came about because people like Riley and Harry had to prod at it and not our SBA executive board. Um, how some decisions like the summer grading, like how summer classes are gonna be set up, have been made without any input from the student body, any opportunity to give feedback. Um, my hope is that when we when fall starts, we are back in the building and things have a bit more normalcy, but like we cannot forget the lessons that we learned here either way. There has to be more opportunities for students to give feedback, but I think that that starts with this communication with the administration and remembering what I said again in my initial remarks, where like it's not, it can't be that the SBA just does whatever the administration, like they're just there to be like a mouthpiece. Like they, there has to be a two-way street. There has to be collaboration. It has to be that they're taking stuff back to the student body, that they're taking stuff from the student body to the administration. Um, I think that at the moment we need a significant culture change. The SBA cannot be as passive as it has been, and particularly in this crisis, but just every day, there has to be an opportunity. There, We need to be having regular meetings. I'm gonna be very honest with you guys. We should be having regular council meetings to talk about what's being discussed among the faculty and the administration while this is going on. And it is incredible to me that not only have we not had regular meetings, we canceled our original meeting, for the SBA, and then we kind of had to have like a okay, be ready at noon two days from now to to discuss. You know, like that to me is insane. We we have to do better about having regular meetings and, and open channels and being active. Thank you for your question, James. Can I can I tack on to that? Oh, okay, um, just, I'll go after you, Frank. Go ahead. I mean, I oh, I just I just have two quick points, but Frank, you started speaking first, so you go ahead. All right. Um, I just. I, I agree with everything that Landon said. Um, I can say that, that that meeting that we had with the SBA a couple of days ago was only after um, I kind of gave some um, <laughs> nasty emails to some people about we should be meeting. Um, but that that's neither here nor there. Um, I agree though. The SBA was completely absent during all of that. And in the future, like, what if? You know, like we're not sure what's happening with this pandemic. We could be back in classes the fall and it starts, you know, coming back together again, you know, starts the, a surge in cases again. And then what do we do? We just wait for the administration to tell us, you know, what they're planning. The, the SBA had a role and it advocated that role. And God bless the one else for stepping up and taking, you know, uh, taking up that. Because no one else was going to do it, apparently. Um, and I think that that is part of the culture change that Landon's talked about. And I mean, it, I really feel like there is a, a lot of people that understand this and they know that this is, you know, like this is the SBA's, you know, job to be doing this. So, um, but I also want to get back to the point about the tuition transparency because that um, the tuition shift that was two years ago, they did that. And then we had an ad hoc committee on the SBA, the tuition transparency committee. Um, and we were able to get the administration to do, to publish a video explaining it. And they, they didn't actually, yeah. It, and then, and then the committee somehow disappeared this year. So I don't know, and it and it get back it gets back to the fact that the president has the supreme authority on scheduling meetings and can do whatever they want. Um, and if you don't make decisions with the entire executive board, if you're just saying I don't feel like bothering people or I can do this myself, then it just it doesn't work out well in the end. So I couldn't agree more with Landon and Maya. I can't wait to hear what you guys say. <laughs> yes, I just have. To um, and I completely agree to echo that we need to be having more consistent meetings. Originally, I had that point because of our um, appeals process procedure for the budget. And so 
I just thought that even when someone has to wait until the next S SBA meeting to be able to present or appeal that they would end up having to wait a month. And I, I just feel like just from reading that, that we should have more frequent meetings so that it wouldn't be a month that it would end up being the next week. So thank you for bringing up that point. So the two points I have just quickly are that the point of this is to elect a president that you know will adequately represent you. And so when the doors close and it's just you where it's just you and the vice president, what we're looking for is someone that's going to say, whenever there's, which leads into my second point that whenever there's an opportunity for the president to advocate for the student body on something as big as tuition changes or a grading system or summer grading that the president would break to say that I need to be able to at least speak to um, the rest of my SBA executive board or the SBA body or to ask for student impact. And so I think that that's why elections and campaigning are so important because let's say, for example, that the, the administration asks for um, discretion or says, oh, we can't release this to everyone. That is the purpose of an SBA to have a collective group of elected officials that are representative of the student body who I can, the president could say, or in my position, I would say, okay, well, fine. If I can't say this to the entire school, can I at least know that I can uh, approach 20, 30 people who were elected by the student body and say, hey, this is a general idea. I can't get into specifics. What are your thoughts so I can bring this back to the administration? And so um, I think that those two work together. It doesn't have to be that we're just sharing everything. I do respect that things need to be sometimes kept confidential, but I don't think that the easy way, which is, oh, let's just let the administration decide and then you go and tell everyone that that was the best decision that they could make is fair. Um, and I think that the easiest way to circumvent that is to use the SBA for what they're designed for, which is to be representative of the student body. Thank you. Question. Great question. Thank you, Frank, Maya, and Landon. Jimmy, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, thank you. I was just jumping as uh, the last note. I'm going to try to keep things brief because I know a lot of you know good inputs been said already that I definitely agree with. And I guess I would just first start by saying that I don't believe that the SBA currently rubber stamps anything that the administration does. Uh, I personally was involved in sitting in on uh, over 12 hours of faculty council meetings over the last three weeks. And, oh. Jimmy, your microphone's cutting in and out. I'm not sure what's going on. Let me try to reload. I'll be right back. All right, so Jimmy's going to leave and come back and see if that fixes the microphone. I just wanted to thank um, all the candidates for their answers. Um, to my question, um, I, I think it's really important, um, you know, and that's why we do have elected officials, but not even I'm, I'm on the SBA and go to meetings and I didn't know that summer grading was happening. So, you know, I think definitely at least being able to communicate the if the information is confidential within the SBA itself is important. Um, can you so, hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can hear oh, you now. Thank you. Jimmy. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I'm just trying to pick, think of where I had started. Um, I can just, uh, I guess what I would say is I don't think that that, you know, there are the response by the SBA to COVID-19 was definitely not perfect. And I think that it's easy to look back in hindsight and say that 2020, you know, there were a lot of things we could do differently. And I agree that there are things that could have been different, but, you know, this was a crisis that we were all navigating and, uh, Caitlin, I think, did it as best she could to try to elicit, uh, you know, student response. She sent out a, a survey and students were submitting questions to her. Dean Gontram, the administrative committee received over a hundred, uh, an input from over a hundred students, including uh, what ended up being 40 pages of student addendum that was given then to the faculty that they took into discussions. Um, and it is definitely frustrating because there's a level in which discussions of the faculty council meetings are confidential and I think that is to you know protect faculty but a better job should have been done to relay that information consistently to students and um, so I definitely agree that there were shortcomings with the SBA's response uh, for this situation but uh, that's just something to improve off of and not just consistently be backward looking of critiques in the past like maybe we try to be sometimes with the frustrating decision to shift to a credit, no credit, because I'm definitely in the same situation where, with Jamie, where I didn't know that my 2L and 3L year were going to be uh, based on a per credit uh, uh, tuition charge, just the same as you mentioned. But 
and you know, as far as there is a, oh, sorry, I was just reading Rachel's comment. Um, there is a certain amount of level two, I think, coming out of faculty committee meetings where Dean Tobin prefers that he be the one communicating decisions to the student body. As we mentioned this past Wednesday um, about the summer grading, that's something that I was expecting Dean Tobin to include in his email Thursday night, Friday morning when I saw that it wasn't, I reached out to Dean Gontram and she said that while it wasn't in the email, it was updated on the FAQs and I told her, you know, students don't even know that there's an OSA frequently asked questions page. So next time Dean Tobin sends out an email, he has to include that information and it needs to be, you know, more transparency. So while there are some areas where it has been tough and difficult to get that transparency, I think that working together and working more fluidly instead of being combative against faculty is the best way to move forward. And um, without going any further, I know we're over the time already, so I'll just uh, settle it with that. Thanks. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, I don't see questions in the chat. There was one more question for um, the candidate Gabrielle so uh, Gabrielle are you still on oh, I didn't look at this. I am I'm here great okay um, just gonna throw this at you really quick it's the last question that was emailed in um, it is as follows the school has threatened to reduce the amount of money the SBA is awarded each semester because we don't spend it all what will you do to make sure that that doesn't happen as student organizations grow and hope to plan new events and programming Obviously, yes. take a sec to think about it if you want. Um, I have heard that, that that has been sort of a concern in the past. Uh, to be honest, I am a little bit more concerned this year because of the COVID-19 that I am worried that they might use that to make another argument that funds should be reduced. Um, but I do hope to either sit down in person or have conversations with the administration during the summer before school starts to uh, make the argument that uh, to keep our funding at least where it is. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, with that being said, it looks like there aren't any further questions. Um, so if that is the case, I think we can wrap up what I think is a very successful um, SBA, unofficial SBA forum. Uh, so thank you very much, guys, for being present. Um, appreciate your time. I know it is two hour, over two hours on a Saturday. So thank you all. Thanks so much, Rachel and Jamie, for setting this up and getting this together. It's no problem. Big shout out, um, big shout out to James. <laughs> Bye to you guys.